My name is Irene Bielkini and uh, I worked for many years into the study and uh, the collaboration with the archive of the MIC, the International Museum of Ceramics in Faenza. And more particularly, I focused my attention on the history of the Faenza Prize. This very sad woman close to me is the soldier's mother, an artwork who won the Faenza Prize in 1941. In the first years, in fact, the prize was mainly linked to a theme and being the period of the war, the theme was uh, the soldier's mother and this is the winning piece. Many and other stories are kept inside the archive, not only the sad story of this mother, but many beautiful stories of our heritage, of our collection as a museum, but as a community and as uh, the history of ceramics in itself passes through the different stages of the Faenza Prize, who I mean, which from 1938 till today uh, changed in uh, uh, techniques, uh, in attention, uh, in attitude also. In fact, the, the theme as the soldier's mother were left and uh, new uh, approaches uh, came into the scene. My main task, my main goal was firstly to analyze uh, the, the early years of the prize and then I helped uh, the archive, uh, the historic archive of the museum in the process of digitalization of all the materials that we had and I inserted many uh, artworks and artists in a huge database that you can find online in our website. Uh, the activity that was done throughout the years and it, it's still going on from the personnel of the museum is the constant uploading of materials that you can uh, find in an easy way online from home. The main goal of this work is to uh, give access to a large population to our materials, but also in the process of uh, digitalizing the materials, you can have the time of re-examining again the artworks, of examining the history of the artist, of confronting yourself with many historians who studied those artists. So the importance of the archive from one side is to keep the memory of our history, to keep the memory of all the materials that the artists sent throughout the years, but as also the final goal of providing to new researchers new materials and to make these materials uh, uh, as accessible as possible. These two amazing pieces were presented by Leoncillo Leonardi for the Faenza Prize and uh, we are so lucky now to have them in our collection. Actually, they are not alone. Our collection of contemporary ceramics grew bigger and bigger thanks to the Faenza Prize. The person, in fact, taking part to the Faenza Prize knew that uh, in exchange of the prize, which was a prize in money and still is a prize in money, uh, the artwork, the winning artwork, would have been uh, acquired by the museum for their own collection. The Faenza Prize started in 1938 and so, as you can imagine, in 61 editions we had the possibility of acquiring many pieces. First of all, from 1938 till 1962, the artists taking part to the Faenza Prize were all Italian artists. So, for that particular period of time, our collection is consistently uh, based on the Italian artists who took part to the Faenza Prize. Later, the prize became international and so the variety uh, grew bigger and bigger also in terms of nations. 
What is extremely interesting for these uh, initial years uh, from 1938 onwards uh, is how the prize uh, changed and uh, adapt itself uh, to the historical moment. The first prizes, in fact, were mainly connected to a theme, so the artist had to abide to a particular theme, like uh, um, the mother of the aviator, one of the very important pieces that we have in our collection, uh, which won in the early years of the prize. Later on, the prize became more large and more interest into contemporary artists. Um, and uh, and uh, so there was for a period of time the coexistence of ceramists, uh, mainly uh, making uh, artworks in uh, ceramic but very connected with daily use and proper artists, proper contemporary artists like Leoncillo. And uh, what is uh, very important is to understand how relevant the prize was in that period of time. To win the Fiennes Prize was a big recognition and the most important Italian artists took part to our prize. That means that uh, their uh, participation is uh, still today an important historical document and to create an archive, a physical archive, having the memory of all the history behind the exposition is fundamentally important to know more and better uh, important artists like Leoncillo and their own um, path with ceramic. What you see here, in fact, is the physical direct result of the Fiennes Prize, how the collection grew, which were the works that won. But there is a huge word behind what you see here. That is all the organization, all the preparation, all the materials sent by the artist throughout the years. That is a huge uh, incredible amount of documents that had to be organized, that had to be uh, studied and kept safe in order to preserve the memory of the prize. This uh, huge collection of documents, pictures and many other things is uh, conserved physically in our archive, but we felt um, how important was to digitalize as much as possible the materials so that even uh, the spectators who are far away from our museum can have access to such documentation. Prior to the digitalization, in fact, uh, you had to come and visit us to see our archive. Now we are lucky enough to give you the possibility of do a research from your own computer, your own laptop at home. In 1962, after some years, uh, the Faenza Prize uh, became international and uh, that uh, decision allowed many international artists to take part to our prize and allowed us as well to enlarge our collection of contemporary artists working with ceramics. The section that you see here in the museum is the direct result of this decision and allowed us to have uh, a very different variety of uh, uh, nationality, of materials and uh, of many different techniques. What is uh, and was particularly challenging at the time and still is, is the variety of material, as I told you, that the artists started to present. In fact, depending upon the region from which each and every artist was coming from, the, um, mater the materials presented started to become more and more different. 
uh, the use of porcelain, grass and other materials really entered the scene. All the paper that you see behind, above me, we are actually totally surrounded, is the archive of the Fein Surprise. As you can imagine, from 1938 onwards, we collected many participation and uh, much materials, a lot of materials, also because each and every year uh, the artist who decided to participate to the prize uh, had to compile a form, a paper, um, describing their artwork, describing the technique they used uh, and providing their uh, CV uh, and providing a critical text written about them or by them so that the jury could examine their production. As you can imagine, all the materials uh, couldn't fit into the catalogues of the prize, for example, uh, couldn't fit in the exhibition, there was no purpose, but still uh, those materials were kept, were collected in order to create what? To create an archive of the history of those artists, but also to keep the description that the artists themselves did of their own artworks. As you can imagine, such documentation is extremely precious and uh, was never published, so it's a really, really uh, a treasure for research um, for people curious and interested in ceramics in general. So the decision of developing the archive that as you can see uh, was uh, very heterogeneous were different materials uh, and uh, had a problem of conservation in itself but also of accessibility because if you wanted to find information about about one artist you had to come here physically in presence in order to see all the documentation, in order to see the description, in order to see uh, the materials that he indicated in the very first place. Uh, so we decided to um, make this variety of material more accessible, to create a digital platform with some guidelines uh, so that we could organize uh, these different uh, um, materials in something very coherent and we decided to put it in a digital database. Uh, by doing so, uh, the, the researcher, but the curious or the general public can uh, do specific research. For example, you can see uh, all the works presented made in porcelain throughout the years, or you can see all uh, the artists uh, uh, who participated to the prize coming from Japan, or uh, you can also which is easier, uh, select and choose directly one particular artist and you will have the result. In this database you will find many materials. You can also find the first pages of the catalogues of that edition that were scanned so that you can have access to the jury uh, because each and every year the prize was given to the artist prior to a judgment by the jury and those judgments are now uh, accessible online. Uh, as you can see the possibility of what you can find and what you can search are almost infinite and we are very happy that now these such variety is fully accessible from the public from your home uh, but more particularly we are uh, quite sure that the organization of the archive that was done firstly physically and then transposed into digital will uh, um, secure a better life and a future to all these materials. Um, what happened here, of course, it's quite unique uh, due to the amount of papers uh, we received throughout the years, but it can be done 
for from everyone in from every artist to keep an archive of your artworks it's extremely important to keep an archive of how you presented your own artwork when how to keep uh, uh, the description of your artwork the text written by the critic and the pictures of your artwork is extremely important in an order that will guarantee you to have access to it after uh, so what happened here can be done everywhere, but the scope, the final scope uh, um, has to be to enlarge, to organize, uh, first of all to organize your materials and then to enlarge the community uh, that can have access to such materials. This was the general uh, scope of the archive of the Premio Faenza, but what happened when we started to organize physically the materials was also the uh, awareness uh, that uh, technology changes and uh, so what was very technological in the 50s or in the 70s or in the 80s is not so technological anymore. So to convert uh, all the materials that we have uh, in digital meant also to keep them alive and accessible. Uh, just to give you some examples, uh, we asked artists to send pictures of their artworks for the catalogs and they did so in the 50s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s and in the 2000s. And of course the format of such images constantly changed. Uh, we had uh, photographs, we had Polaroids, we had floppy disks, we had many, many materials that now are very difficult to read and to preserve. So uh, the final goal of the archive was to preserve those materials, first of all, to make them accessible, secondly, and in the very um, last and final goal, as I told you, was also to, to make accessible online some materials that were initially on paper or on pictures, on photographs, to the general public. We don't know how the technology will change, we don't know if the cloud online of our database will need to be updated again, but up to now we tried to do uh, something uh, that was really accessible and that uh, gave us the possibility of reorganizing, of reconsidering and uh, of uh, conserving and giving a new life to this important heritage that we had.